The man in the pool is architect Moshe Safdi, a man of the world at the top of the world. The creator of this colossal Stonehenge, the 10 million square foot Marina Bay Sands Resort, which dominates the Singapore skyline. 57 stories up, 650 feet off the ground, there is a park and the pool that seems to spill right over the edge. You know, we didn't know what it would be like to be on the 57th floor. Would it be too windy? How would it feel? Would you feel vertigo? He's building or has completed 85 projects structure across structure five continents. Museums, colleges, apartment complexes, libraries, government buildings, airports, an entire town. Global Citizen is the name of a recent exhibition of his work at the Skirball Cultural Center in Los Angeles, which he designed. The circumstances of life made me a man of many countries and many places. I have three citizenships, uh, Israel by birth, uh, Canada by adoption, and the United States by adoption. So I have three passports. Born in 1938, Safdi spent his childhood in Haifa on the Mediterranean coast. But his family moved to Montreal, Canada when he was a teenager. An aptitude test he took in high school led him to study architecture at McGill University. He had no idea that his thesis, a concept for reinventing the apartment building, would soon make him world famous. It became Habitat 67, the centerpiece of Canada's World's Fair, Expo 67. I was then 24. It was like a fairy tale. You know, I'd never built a building before. The point was to create a better way to live in a city. Affordable apartments that were not cells. They were more like houses, accessible to nature. Each of these boxes was prefabricated in a factory that we built. We installed the bathrooms and kitchens and all the windows and everything in the factory, lifted each box, 70 tons worth by crane, and lifted them one on top of the other. Softy admits being inspired by Legos. Each apartment, which is made up of two or three or four of these boxes, has one or two roof terraces, one above the other all the way up. 50 million fairgoers saw Habitat. It became an international sensation. So did Moshe Safdi. Suddenly, there were plans for habitats in New York City, Jerusalem, in Puerto Rico. But none of them ever got built. A huge disappointment for Safdi. Was it ahead of its time then, and is it ahead of its time now? I often say it's an idea whose time is yet to come. Even now, I say that. Because? Because I think it will proliferate. Meanwhile, from the moment Habitat was completed, there were waiting lists for its 158 apartments. There still are. It's really pretty. Pia Teichman moved in with her family in 1973. It's a house, and yet it's an apartment. I can walk away, no snow cleaning, no upkeep on the outside. Moshe Softy has moved on but has taken with him many of the ideas he explored here. He says that as an architect, he uses light and water to try and achieve what music achieves with rhythm and melody. I've always wondered, can architecture actually have that kind of impact that music has on us? Because that's beyond utility, it's beyond functional. It's to do with just spirituality. The pavilions of Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, are actual bridges built over a flowing spring. At Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Memorial and Museum in Jerusalem, Safdi built through a mountain. I felt that the story of the Holocaust is so horrific that it cannot be a building that like, feels like a building. So I started thinking underground. Introspective. Yes, completely you go deep into the earth and then you emerge to light at the other side of the mountain. And that was controversial because people said, overly optimistic, why are you doing that? Why so expressive? And my point was life prevailed. 
The nature of his commissions often requires turning symbolism into structure. I wanted a building drenched with daylight, uh, and that's true about many of my buildings, but here it had symbolic value because light penetrating the building has something to do with peace for me. You know, it has something to do with transparency. The United States Institute of Peace in Washington, D.C. is meant to suggest the flight of a dove. Is it important to you to do good with architecture? Well, every project, the sublime and the ordinary, has critical issues of humanity, of social responsibility. It could be a housing project, it could be Institute of Peace, it could be the central library of a city. And then it twists again. Humanity and social responsibility. Why Moshe Safdie is still refining, rethinking, revisiting Habitat 67. This is much too dense so that... At his office in an old industrial building outside of Boston, the drawings and models show how he's adapted his ideas for humanizing city living. The shape of the facade is undulated so that each unit has a garden coming out of it right there as you climb up the building. It is truly a descendant of the building Softy still calls his firstborn. It's not habitat in every respect, but yes, it is habitat 40 years later in China for middle-income families. And how many people will live here? There's 3,000 residential units. It's probably close to 10,000 people. Wow. An idea whose time has come after all, finally. It is being built in the Chinese city of Qinhuangdao right now.